In this lesson, we are going to study proofs of statements involving the universal quantifier. To prove a proposition of the form for all x, p of x, we must show that p of x is true for every object in the domain of your variable x. So therefore, we always start the proof of for all x, p of x by let x be an arbitrary element of u and then we show that p of x is true for that object now take note that in this proof we may only use properties of x that are shared by every element of the domain u then since x is arbitrary we can conclude that for all x p of x is true so therefore it has this form Again, we start with let x be an arbitrary element of u, show that p of x is true, therefore, for all x, p of x is true. For example, for all rational numbers x and y, x plus y over 2 is a rational number. If we write this using symbols, this becomes for all x, y in q, x plus y all over 2 must be rational. So therefore, how do we go about our proof? We start with let x and y be rational numbers, arbitrary rational numbers. Now take note that our goal is to show that x plus y over 2 is in q. So that means that we have to make use of x and y being rational numbers. So therefore, there exist integers, let's say, m, n, and p, q with n and q being non-zero such that x is equal to m over n and y is equal to p over q. Do not forget the condition that the denominator should be non-zero. We now plug these values to x plus y over 2. We get x plus y all over 2 is equal to m over n plus p over q all over 2, which is equal to mq plus np over 2nq. Take note that for a number to be a rational number, it has to be a ratio of two integers and the denominator should be non-zero. So since m and p and q are integers, so are mq plus np and 2nq. Moreover, n and q are both non-zero. And so, the denominator 2nq is not equal to 0. So therefore, x plus y all over 2 is a rational number. That concludes our proof. I just want to emphasize that in proving this statement, you cannot start your proof by getting specific examples like take x equals 1 half y equals 1 half, thus x plus y all over 2 is equal to 1 half plus 1 half all over 2, which is again equal to 1 half is a rational number. This is absolutely wrong. You cannot take specific examples for your x and y because you want to show that this statement is true for all rational numbers x and y. So that is why it is very important that you always start your proof with let x and y be arbitrary rational numbers because this is what you want to prove for all x, y. Next, let us show that for every integer m, m squared plus m is even. Take note that this is the same as the implication if m is an integer, then m squared plus m is even. And before when we were proving implications, you start with let m be an integer, correct? Because this statement is equivalent to this one. Anyway, if we write this statement using symbols, this becomes for all m in z, 
m squared plus m is even. So therefore, for our proof, we start with let m be an integer. And what do we want to show? We want to show that m squared plus m is even. How should we go about our proof? Well, we cannot do anything if we just assume that m is an integer. So therefore, we will divide it into two cases. So for case 1, m is even. And of course, for case 2, m is odd. So thus, m is equal to 2k for some integer k. Hence, we get that m squared plus m is equal to 4k squared plus 2k, which can be written as 2 times k squared plus k. So therefore, m squared plus m is even because k squared plus k is another integer. For case 2, we have m is odd. So thus, m is equal to 2k plus 1 for some integer k again. And so, m squared plus m is equal to 2k plus 1 squared plus 2k plus 1. And this is equal to 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 plus 2k plus 1, which can be written as 2 times k squared plus, we have 6k here, so this is 3k and then plus 1. Therefore, m squared plus m is even. In both cases, we have shown that m squared plus m is even. Now, sometimes we use proof by contradiction to show that for all x, p of x is true. So, when we want to prove for all x, p of x is true by contradiction, we suppose that its negation is true. And what is the negation of this one? The negation is there exists an x such that not p of x is true. And what we want to show is to obtain a contradiction, q and not q for some statement q. And therefore, once we have found a contradiction, that means that our initial assumption is false. And so, for all x, p of x is true. For example, we want to prove that for all x, in this open interval 0 to pi over 2, sine x plus cosine x is greater than 1. First, let us write this using symbols. This means that for all x, element of 0 pi over 2, sine x plus cosine x is greater than 1. And we will prove this by contradiction. So what is the negation of this statement? The negation of this statement is there exists an x element of 0 pi over 2 such that sine x plus cosine x is less than or equal to 1. So for our proof, suppose that there exists an x element of this interval such that sine x plus cosine x is less than or equal to 1. We want to arrive at a contradiction. Now take note that since x belongs in the first quadrant, what can you say about the sign of sine x and cosine x? Sine x and cosine x will be positive for all the angles in the first quadrant. So we write since x is an element of 0 to pi over 2, sine x is greater than 0 and cosine x is greater than 0. Hence, their sum will be strictly greater than 0 as well. So we have sine x plus cosine x will be greater than 0. And let me just add this, less than or equal to 1. Since these numbers are all positive, when we square everything, the inequality will still remain. Okay. 
we get 0 is less than the square root of this, which is sine squared x plus 2 sine x cosine x plus cosine squared x less than or equal to 1. However, since sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1, when we subtract 1 everywhere, we get that negative 1 is less than 2 sine x cosine x less than or equal to 0. What happened here? Sine x cosine x is negative or 0, but that cannot be because sine x and cosine x are both positive. This is a contradiction since sine x and cosine x are both positive. So therefore, our initial assumption that there exists an x such that sine x plus cosine x less than or equal to 1 is false. Therefore, for all x in the interval 0 to pi over 2, sine x plus cosine x is strictly greater than 1. Now, there are two situations where in an implication is true for silly reasons. The following definition gives us the first situation. Let S be a set. We say that the statement for all x in S, P of x implies Q of x is trivially true when for all x in S, Q of x is true. In other words, the conclusion of the implication is always true. Let us recall that if the conclusion is true, regardless whether P of x is true or false, automatically the entire implication will be true. So since this is always true, this statement for all x in S and then this implication will always be true. So we say that the statement will be trivially true. For example, let us consider the following. Let x be a real number. If x squared is less than 73, then 0 is less than 1. Take note that the conclusion 0 less than 1 is true. So the statement is trivially true. For the second one, let a be an integer. If a is odd, then 2a is even. If we look at the conclusion again, a is an integer, definitely 2a will always be even. Again, we say that the conclusion 2a is even is true for any integer a. Therefore, the statement is trivially true. For our last example, let x be a real number. If x is less than 5, then x squared minus 2x is greater than or equal to negative 1. I will no longer write the formal proof, but take a look at the conclusion here. We have x squared minus 2x greater than or equal to negative 1 can be written as x squared minus 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And this is just the same as the square of x minus 1 squared. And this is always true. So therefore, the above statement is trivially true. The second situation where the implication will be true happens when the premise is always false. So we say that the statement for all x in S, P of x implies Q of x, is vacuously true when for all x in S, not P of x is true. In other words, the premise of the implication is always false. Take note again that if the premise is false, Regardless of whether the conclusion is true or false, the entire implication will be true. So therefore, this statement will be true and we say that it is vacuously true. For example, let x be an integer. If 3 is less than x and x is less than 2, then x squared plus 4 is equal to 7. Take note that this is impossible. You cannot have an integer which is greater than 3 and at the same time less than Two. So therefore, we say that the statement is vacuously true. You just say it is impossible to have an integer x such that 3 is less than x and x is less than 
to. Thus, the statement is vacuously true. Next, let x be an integer if negative x squared is greater than 2, then x is equal to 5. So for the proof, you can still start with let x be an integer, but you now say that x squared is greater than or equal to 0. And so negative x squared is less than or equal to 0. Hence, it is impossible to have negative x squared being greater than 2. So thus, the statement is vacuously true.